Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us for this uh, uh, third uh, TechMap webinar. It is the first one after the summer break. There was no webinar in August, and I will announce the next one at the end of, uh, of this talk. My name is Guy Hendricks. Uh, I'm from Avia GIS, and I'm very happy to welcome you to this uh, third webinar. In this series, it is our intention to address topics that help improve TechMap outputs. Well, actually, I mean, TechMap, as you know, is about spatial modeling. It involves a lot of data inputs. We've been talking about that in previous webinars already. But before we start, just uh, some practical information. First, the webinar is recorded. Uh, so afterwards, it will be made publicly available on YouTube. Uh, the two first ones are already available there. And uh, the participants are muted or are requested to stay muted. And any questions, please ask them in the in the chat. There is on, on the top left bar on your screen, on the sidebar, uh, you see a Q&A uh, icon. That's where, that's actually the chat. That's where you can ask questions. And after Ruth's talk, I will moderate these questions. So our speaker today is uh, Ruth. Uh, I think she will be helping me to pronounce her name correctly. She's uh, from the University of Helsinki in Finland, and she holds an MSc in geography and is currently working on her PhD, which is focused on mapping vector-borne diseases. She's both interested in mapping the vectors and the diseases. In Finland, we're working together at the moment uh, on a really exciting project called uh, VecLimit. And uh, there she's working on ticks and TBE, but also, uh, and, and that's the topic of the talk today, on mosquitoes and uh, Cindy's virus. As discussed in the two previous webinars, the spatial modeling of vectors and diseases they transmit requires quite good quality data. In this webinar, uh, Ruth will be the first to address the step further. One step further, once you have the good data, uh, what do you do for starting to model? I mean, how, how, how do you model? And she will, as a first, uh, use FakeMap to model her data and compare this to uh, modeling outputs, sorry, to modeling outputs actually obtained using uh, R software packages. She will uh, tell you all about this. So, Ruth, uh, please uh, enjoy your talk. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Ki and other people in Avia GIS that I have opportunity to present, present our study here. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, using VecMap to model historical data sets. And especially the, uh, our study uh, re uh, relating to mosquito borne synthesis virus infections in, in Finland. So, uh, synthesis virus is mosquito transmitted alpha virus, and it's uh, one of the medically important vector borne viruses in Northern Europe. Uh, it causes uh, outbreaks of rash and arthritis with hundreds of thousands of cases, and also uh, symptoms may, may persist. Uh, Synthesis virus infections are also, also called as uh, Bogosta disease in Finland, and the cases are notified in, in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. But only outbreaks are documented in South Af uh, Africa and Northern Europe. Those have been associated with Synthesis virus type 1. And actually, I took uh, this article from, from our newspaper uh, last, last uh, week as the, this year happened to be epidemic year uh, for, for synthesis virus uh, in Finland. So uh, there are already more than uh, 330 cases uh, already, and there are more to come, uh, as also uh, those cases, they are uh, registered uh, also uh, until, until November. So last time, this, uh, these many cases were in 2002. So, synthesis virus is uh, circulating through transmission cycle, 
where migratory birds and wild fowls are amplifying hosts. And ornithophilic mosquitoes, uh, such as Culex torrentium and Culista morsitans, are the ones which transmit the virus among birds, being enzootic vectors. And, and then uh, Aedes cinereus and Culex pipiens are the ones which transmit the uh, virus from birds to humans, being uh, bridge vectors. So as you know, vector-borne diseases are associated with climate variables and, and uh, especially arthropod vectors are uh, uh, very sensitive to them. And uh, weather and environmental conditions, they, they affect the uh, survival and reproduction rates of vectors, but also uh, pathogens within, within vectors. And in Finland, Pogosta disease uh, outbreaks have been focused in, in uh, eastern and central parts of Finland, and this uh, sets a good potential to predict and understand the drivers for the, of the spatial pattern. It's uh, still a bit uh, understudied how, how the presence of known synthesis virus vector and host species affect the uh, risk in Finland, and just we apply GIS and habitat suite model techniques to better understand uh, uh, how the drivers contribute to the risk. So this is uh, our paper, which was uh, published in, in June uh, in International Journal of uh, Environmental Research and Public Health. So uh, purpose of our study was to predict the distribution of known synthesis virus mosquito vectors in Finland and uh, to use uh, the outputs of these as explanatory data with synthesis virus host data and environmental data to estimate the risk of focus disease in Finland. Also, our aim was to identify the most influential predictors to, driving, to drive the uh, spatial patterns of, of this risk. So uh, this was the Pogosta occurrence data, which included uh, serologically confirmed human Pogosta disease cases by municipality in 2000 to 2019. So there were 91 uh, uh, cases uh, by average annually, uh, with an incidence of 1.7 to 100,000 residents. So we calculated the average incidence of all municipalities over 20 year period and said uh, that the average value was said to be the threshold for presence municipalities and and rest were considered as absence municipalities. So then we had uh, mosquito species data, which included uh, presence data from 2009 by Jenny, uh, collected by Jenny Hesson from Sweden and then presence absence data uh, from 2012 to 2018, collected by uh, Lorna Kölvevel from our group. And uh, after data cleaning, there were 116 presence absence locations for Culiceta morsitans, 144 for Culex pipiens torrentium, and 184 Aedes cinereus Then we had uh, bird host species data, the grouse data which was obtained from National uh, Resources Institute Finland and included the calculated average annual densities of Philoptermican, black grouse, copper, kale and hazel grouse in, in municipalities. Environmental and other data was selected based on known factors to affect the distribution of, of vectors and, and synthesis virus infections. It was obtained from various sources it was uh, interpolated climate data from satellite imagery, or then it was uh, derived from GIS. And the data set for SINPIS virus vector model included 31 predictors, and data set for focus disease modeling included 33 uh, predictors. So, of course, there is always some <laughs> benefits and, and also problems with the data. So, uh, for example, Pogosta uh, disease data, there were, there were multiple annual disease cases per municipality, but we calculated the incidence, uh, incidence of municipality and used it to define the uh, presence, absence and, 
and in this case the multiple cases in each uh, in uh, same location was not not big problem uh, but in finland uh, cases are registered in in uh, usually the the municipality of residence but you, uh, the actual infection may be from from the other area for example in finland almost almost every family have uh, has uh, some cottage somewhere else else in finland and uh, we had to calculate also average values per municipality uh, from explanatory data and and uh, this is why there was some information losses and also uh, we had to use more scarce resolution explanatory data that was actually uh, available mosquito data we aggregated from multiple years and uh, due to the lack of reliable identification methods we had to combine uh, QLEX PPNs and QLEX torrentium data as also uh, edes Cinereus and edes Geminus data also uh, relating to mosquito data absences are not probably the real absences but for example depending on collection time or, or then weather conditions but uh, this uh, mosquito data is collected uh, with, with coordinates so we could utilize quite high resolution environmental and other data which was uh, in this study uh, one square kilometer and uh, we cleaned the data so double observation uh, were removed as also the multiple observation close by each other So to clarify, uh, to model mosquito species distributions, uh, we used the PIMER2 package in R, and uh, dependent variable was potential vectors presence access data and explanatory data included environmental and other data. And for Bogosta disease uh, modeling, we used both PIMER2 package in R as also VECMAP software, and the response variable was presence absence data of Bogosta disease by municipality and then explanatory data consisted of uh, outputs of, of the vector models as also host density and environmental data. So we check the multicollinearity of the variables with the variance inflation factors and excluded the, the correlated variables uh, from the final, uh, final uh, modeling. So the final data set included 21 predictors for Synthes virus vector modeling and 19 predictors for Bogosta disease modeling. So uh, these following eight habitat suitability modeling techniques were used, which are written uh, on the slide. And in PIMER2, we used the uh, ensemble predictions uh, to, to reduce the uncertainty related to the choice of single modeling technique. And uh, in ensemble model, we use the best performing uh, individual, individual models and, and uh, calibration and evaluation sets were repeated 10 times for synthesis virus vector modeling and 50 times for Bogosta disease modeling. In VECMAP, uh, we used uh, GLM and, and RF models to test the consistency of the results for Bogosta disease risk maps. And of course, we, we used uh, calibration and evaluation sets uh, and tested the model performance with area on the curve, curve value. So, uh, for habitat suitability of uh, synthesis virus vectors, the high probabilities of uh, Edes Cinereus Geminus presence were associated with high mean temperatures, uh, high NDVI and a low, long growing season, as also low wind speed, low solar radiation and, and short distances to coniferous and mixed forest. And high probabilities of QLEX PPN torrentium were associated with uh, high water vapor pressure, high land surface temperatures and low wind speeds speed and sparse vegetation and uh, Culiceta morsitans, the habitat suitability of Culiceta morsitans was associated with long growing season, high precipitation and high solar radiation. 
So these were the resulted uh, prediction maps for synthesis virus vectors. So on the on the left side you can see the habitat suitability of for uh, Aedes cinereus geminus, and as you can see, almost uh, all Finland are um, estimated to be uh, like high high suitability areas for for Aedes cinereus geminus, excluding the northern northernmost uh, Finland. And in the middle, there is the um, probability for Culex pipiens torrentium, and the situation is quite similar. So almost throughout the Finland is uh, estimated to be uh, high suitability areas, except uh, or excluding the northernmost part and also southern Lapland as also uh, some areas in western side. Then on the uh, right side, there is the probability for Curiceta uh, morsitans presence. And, uh, and the highest uh, suitability areas are, are estimated to be, be in southern Finland, also, uh, including the Holland Islands. So uh, for risk of uh, human synthesis virus infections in Finland, so we use the both PIMER2 and VECMAP. And in PIMER2, all models provided reasonable estimates. And we used the uh, uh, weighted mean ensemble model in PIMER2 with mean AUC value of 0.98 with good sensitivity and uh, specific rate. Also in VECMAP, uh, uh, GLM model uh, produced the mean AUC of 0.93 and random forest model mean AUC of 0.91. So high risk of Pogosta disease uh, in Finland was associated with high densities of black, black grouse, copper, kale and hazel grouse, as also high proportion of mixed forest in peatlands, high number of peat box and lakes in the municipalities, as also high probability of Aedes cinereus geminus uh, occurrence. So these were the Pogosta uh, disease risk maps. And on the left side, you can see the risk map based on a weighted mean ensemble model in PIMER2 in the middle, middle uh, by GLM model in, in VECMAP and on the uh, right side by random forest model in VECMAP. So the uh, risk areas are quite uh, similar uh, by ensemble model and, and RF models. Uh, in GLM, by GLM model, the, the high risk area is more, more coherent, but uh, uh, based on these, uh, these predictions, so the the highest risk areas are located in eastern side and central central Finland, as as also assumed before. But also, also in in some municipalities in western side, and even uh, some uh, municipalities in southern Lapland uh, are estimated to be like uh, considerable risk for for Pogosta disease. So to conclude, uh, our results provide new evidence for the joint influence of vectors, host species, and environmental factors in saving the uh, synthesis virus infections pattern in, in Finland. Also, environmentally suitable, suitable areas were identified for the potential synthesis virus vectors. And uh, well, uh, there might be some other influential variables which were not considered our study in our study for example, the occurrence of migratory birds. And in future, uh, we should also include the temporal dimension, different scenarios of land use and climate change, and the population dynamics of host and vector species. But uh, what was interesting to see that uh, we produced uh, similar results with PIMA2 and, and VECMAP, and VECMAP might uh, offer a possibility to people who are not familiarized with, with programming language still to obtain robust model, model outputs. And uh, these were the references. 
and also for the sources of, of this presentation. And I want to thank uh, various organizations who provided provided data and also their open spatial data policy. And I want to thank also all the funders who, who made this uh, study possible. And I want to thank you for, for your attention. Thank you. Uh, first, for the quality of your presentation, really nice uh, presentation route, uh, but also for, for keeping to time, uh, which is uh, extremely rare event. And so, actually, uh, thank you very much for that. So, we mean we've been uh, listening uh, uh, to your talk. Uh, if people want to ask questions, they can uh, put it in the Q&A part, as I said. Uh, I, I, I have a question. Um, uh, well, several questions, actually. Uh, several questions, actually. Um, one one of the questions is um, the the biomod uh, used ensemble model. Uh, what what which which modeling methods were selected to be included in the ensemble model? Do you know that? Uh, uh, which models we included? Yes. Yeah. Did you did you include them yourself, or was it uh, the software deciding that's the ones I'm going to include? And yep. to calculate an ensemble model. Yeah, threshold was said to be 0.7, uh, AUC value of 0.7. So all the models which um, which resulted the higher AUC value were selected, and uh, we used only in PIMER two. There are more models than eight, but uh, uh, there was one slide with where they were. Um, said which which model we used because uh those others they um they have been studied that there are some vague uh, weaknesses of those uh, models so we didn't include them okay so so uh i mean uh, did you you did not include some uh, visual assessment of 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 the model output as a criterion to 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 select uh the models uh, no, we use this AUC, AUC based on selection, but if I understand right <laughs> what you meant. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you think, do, do you think that would be an added value to, uh, to ask, for instance, because, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a question we often get mm. is uh, what, and, and you also, uh, uh, are, have been facing that question. I mean, what, when, why would one model be better than another if you don't know mm -hmm. what the real situation is? Yeah. So, so do you think it would be uh, uh, of interest to have some kind of expert panel and people knowing the situation, uh, assessing, uh, in addition to only using the statistics, also assessing visually? The quality of, of of the output and 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 making a, a maybe a more focused selection uh, for uh, to include in, in the ensemble model. Yeah, I think so. That would be very useful because uh, those models they still they differ a lot from each other. For example, gener uh, GLM and R models they are they are quite different uh, as uh, GLM is quite traditional and then random forest is well that's quite often used in in species distribution models, but but that would be useful indeed. And currently in VECMAP, we don't include automatic ensemble model calculation, but uh, this is obviously possible to do it. Actually, I mean, what is, I mean, is an ensemble model a simple average of uh, the values obtained by different models, or is it more complicated than that? Uh, there are actually, in PIMER 2, you can choose, uh, there's mean, mean also, but there are some different, uh, well, I don't remember them all now, but they are weighted mean and then mean of those uh, those models included. Uh, but there are also other options. Okay, good. So definitely, yes, the, I mean, this is, this, is, this is definitely something people uh, who are doing uh, spatial models should, should, should do, is to indeed compare Different model outputs uh, means mean make make a selection according to uh, the statistics, and uh, but 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 we would definitely advise to also include expert advice and uh, to have uh, an informed 
um, opinion about the model outputs and to then have a, have a, have a more strict selection uh, for doing this uh, uh, ensemble model. At the moment, uh, with Figma, we would suggest to, do, to use, for instance, QGIS and, uh, and to compute uh, then um, uh, these ensemble models. There was at some stage in your, I mean, I mean if you talk, talk about the quality of the data, I think data, really nice quality data. And, uh, and, uh, and Finland has uh, been working with you in the VEC, VEC limit project, and it's quite amazing to see the density of, of, of data and the quality of data in a country like Finland. Um, but you said uh, regarding Pogosta, there was still is some uncertainty because people are diagnosed somewhere. But I mean, how sure can you be that the disease has been um, um, carried? I mean, has been uh, how would I say uh, caught <laughs> in the same area? So how do you judge? Uh, you you said there was a problem, uh, but how do you I mean? What kind of I mean? percentage would that be? Would people go for a very distant, uh, would people have summer houses in a very distant municipality or would it be rather close by a municipality? Uh, in, and, and what percentage of people would eventually uh, uh, have caught the disease in a summer house? We have a rough idea about that. Uh, yeah, so for example, actually we, we um, excluded Helsinki from this uh, <laughs> uh, because uh, usually from, from Helsinki, well, Sinpis virus is not uh, found in in uh, in the southern part. So, so usually people who live in Helsinki they have summer cottage somewhere, and then they uh, get the infection there, and then they come to Helsinki, back to Helsinki, back to capital, and then uh, that's uh, found found there. But uh, but yeah, it's it's very uh, like uh, often that people go to summer, like for whole summer holidays, for example, they go for summer cottages. And also as Pogosta or Sinpis virus, it's uh, usually uh, the, the timing is like in August, September. And that's in Finland, like main uh, like berry picking time. So people are picking berries a lot in Finland. So that's also it's, uh, like increase the uh, risk of getting uh, mosquito bites. Okay. I think it's a smart thing to, to exclude from these kind of data sets when you by definition don't know really uh, what kind of, I mean, what percentage to exclude some centers, which which by definition have people moving a lot around Finland. Uh, that's that's uh, that's quite a smart move, and 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 definitely yes, I don't think it's possible to do a lot more. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks. We've got some questions in the in the chat. Um, your predictors your predictors include most of the vectors and hosts, right? Uh, is there a case for producing single variables of multiple species, both for hosts and vectors? This would be useful, a uh, useful precedent for situations where host or vector data is either patchy or too complex to use a single species. You see, I mean, uh, the, the issue with, with Pogosta is that it is a multi-vector, multi-host thing. Do you think it is possible to simplify that, to, to go for a typical vector or typical host? Um, do you mean that to do separately the, the models for host and, and vector? Yeah, would it be possible, for instance, you know, Yahoo, you've got a wealth of data. I mean, I mean somebody who has not access to, to all these different mosquito distribution model outputs, what would mm -hmm. you suggest them to do? Mm, well, of course, uh, you can also predict by by only by environmental factors, as as it's it's uh, generally known. Uh, for example, in what kind of uh, uh, environmental conditions, the, um, like uh, for example, as uh, as in Finland, the Pogosta disease is usually in in uh, eastern and central part of Finland, Finland. So so there are quite a lot of lakes and uh, and uh, peat box and uh, it's quite like uh, uh, special envoy environment so of course you can use uh, 
environmental data only. But uh, yeah, well, I don't know if I understand the question right. <laughs> Actually, it's a, it's a, it's really wind asking that question. Maybe um, I mean he I mean if he, if if he's happy with your answer, um, um, he will react in the in 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 the in in this in the chat. Now another question is, and that's also a, a, an interesting question when you model something. I mean, what what is what is the need from a public health point of view? Do they want an average situation because the model shows an, a, an, a rather average average situation using the methods you've used? It is an average risk map. Uh, wouldn't they more be be more interested in some kind of minimum and maximum uh, uh, outputs? Might be. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that would be maybe. Yeah, of course, it would add add some information also. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, that's good suggestion also. Uh, what actually really is, is, is more specifying his question. Uh, for instance, uh, take the example of uh, multiple vectors. Say you have uh, very good data in the north part of the country about one vector and, and very good data about in another part of the country of another vector. Mm. I mean, would it make sense to combine this information into, 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 yeah, well, into a model? Um well <laughs> like uh, if there's the can you repeat <laughs> yeah you know well say you have uh, say you 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 have two field teams they've been working separately mm. on, on different uh, issues and 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 it happens that for the northern part of the country you got very good information about one mosquito species which is a potential vector in, in the south of the country, you've got very good information about another mosquito species, but also uh, uh, considered as a good vector. Would it make sense to combine those two data sets uh, in one model? Yeah, why not? From my opinion, at least. Yeah. I would I also do so. that, I must say. Because exactly, because what you want there is have, have, have an idea about the vector, about mm. mean, mean the risk of a mosquito uh, uh, transmitting uh, this information. Of course, the problem may be, mean, 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 I think it's an interesting discussion to think about. And uh, it will not be solved in, 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 in this webinar, but we may in, uh, in future think further and see how to best combine these kind of data sets. Yeah, yeah. Would you think uh, you would model the, the 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 two I mean the two halves of Finland separately using different uh, environmental uh, predictors? Mm, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe it depends also. Yeah, because in Finland, for example, the if that if uh, if that would be like northern and southern part, so. So the environment is uh, quite different uh, from south to north. So might be sense to to predict yes. in different. I mean, it does make sense indeed because if you would if we would model them all at once, I mean, and your environmental variables are be, are going to be very confused. Yeah. And different variables may may uh, better describe the distribution of a vector in one part or another, because that is definitely especially with vector prone diseases with multiple hosts and multiple vectors uh, that definitely is, is is an issue is that you rarely very rarely have a have a, an, a, a complete data set so uh, uh, thinking about how to deal with that is uh, is uh, is quite an important aspect so yeah. if there are no i mean I mean anything else i mean if there are no other questions we 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 can conclude here uh, i'm very grateful to Ruth for giving this presentation, especially also because she's doing this from France, somewhere in the Alps, where she is also uh, doing her, 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 her hobby, which is running in the mountains and uh, working on her thesis uh, in, in the meantime. So it's a, to me, it sounds like an ideal combination. Thank you for your time and your enthusiasm.
and I hope we can uh, keep working uh, together uh, in the coming years. Uh, thanks to Damien for, for organizing this webinar and for Matisse for supporting uh, from the technical side, especially today. And uh, I'm happy to announce the next webinar will be on the 5th of November. So we'll be back again in a six week schedule on the 5th of November, Friday, 5th of November at uh, 12 o'clock uh, Central European time. And there we will uh, actually take an example, a very practical example of how to plan uh, your field work uh, using VECMAP. Uh, we, have, we have had some, uh, some presentations already about uh, outputs with VECMAP. Now we are gonna, in the next, present, in the next webinar, we're gonna deal more with a very practical uh, uh, way to, to plan your survey and to uh, get these, uh, these data uh, for modeling. So thank you very much to all and I uh, wish you a very good uh, weekend and I hope to see you back uh, in the next webinar. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye, Ruth. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.